All right, we are back, and we'll be moving on to round three of Swiss, and it will be a match between Wang Zixuan and Fang An. Both players who have been around for a long time in our community and have really, have always stuck around the middle tier of players. Yeah. Never really breaking through to the next I level. Fang An being more known for his smear girl and his use of smear girl, I wonder if he actually brought it or incorporated it in his team today. Uh, he definitely has a smear girl. <laughs> Fang An definitely has a smear girl on his team. So Xuan though is a player who's always favoured more unconventional choices, even with his legendaries. He's been most consistently the one playing Lugia this season, mm -hmm. but hasn't really found success with it. And I think today he swapped more, he swapped back to a more uh, conventional legendary core. I'm However, aware, huh? his support options have a very, taken very on a very unusual. unique flair today. <laughs> yes. So worry not, there's still plenty of diversity in this matchup. I feel um Farman. Aside from his Smeargle, what do we expect him to play? Is he, is he running the Zern Dawn, Zern Smeargle? Uh, I think Kaman probably runs Zernius and Kaoge combination, something he and Jonathan kind of share in common. But so I suppose it remains to be seen. And I actually believe Zushen is not running two legendaries on his team. What? He's only running one? I, I believe that's what I saw just now. Well, in, in the very first round, we did see that a team with no legendaries beat Kenny, which had two. So that is not entirely uh, impossible as well. But when you consider what else Sushen has brought to his team, yeah, you really that wonder is, what value true. he got out of. I, I really want to see the support mods that he brings, because we have not, I, I have not seen them before at all in this meta, or even in other metas. So we'll be going into game here. Uh, barring some technical difficulties. Apparently the white noise is not playing as it should. But then again, even if they can hear us, what did Farman ever listen to advice anyway? Farman is his own man, yeah. making his own bizarre face. And, and, and so Shane should, should have hung around long enough, I think, to pick up on Farman's habits as well. Oh, so. No one can predict Farman, I'm sorry. <laughs> A good start with knowing is set, which is not always that the easiest thing to know. He, he doesn't always stick conform to... I mean, Smelga can learn any move, and he just utilizes that to his full potential. Alright, so we'll be moving into team preview. And Farman's team is going to be Salamence, Talonflame, Xerneas, Ferraton, Kalga, and Smeargle. And on Zixian's side, we have the Kangaskhan, the Parasect, the Kyogre, the Cyndaquil, uh, Landorus, and the Cresselia. So, so oh, yes. the most striking Pokemon from Zixian's side would be number one, the Cyndaquil, and number two, the Parasect. Number three, the fact he only has one prime restricted legendary on his yeah, team. Yeah, that, that, that is kind of undertone. That, that is kind of swept. That kind of went past me because all I could focus on was on the Cyndaquil. Um, he does have uh, Pras Prasite being naturally slow, Cyndaquil as well not being very fast. Kind of tells me that maybe he's running a sort of a trick room, especially he does have a trick room setter in the in terms of Cresselia. Well, he better hope he gets trick room up because without trick room, I don't see how he's going to stop Xerneas if Xerneas gets set up. Mm -hmm. uh, of course well, he can spore it and he can white guard with Parasite to block Dazzling Gleam. Mm. And you expect the Parasite to be Sash. So he kind of stands a chance against Xenia's 1v1. And actually now that you look at it, I think Farman has a very clear advantage in Ferroton. Because I don't think very, very few things on Zixian's side can touch or beat Ferroton. And I, I don't think Cyndaquil is for real. I, I mean, the Cyndaquil is, is a fire type, but I'm not sure if he packs enough punch <laughs> to beat the Ferroton one-on-one. -on -one. So Ferroton should be quite crucial to uh, Farman's game plan here. Um, and we should only see rain as well for both uh, for the weather, since both of them only opt to bring in Kyogre. Yep. So we see both grass types on each other's team, however, negating the potential for uh, Leaf Seed endgame. Mm. Oh, I, I don't think... So Ferrothon could easily seed everything else on Zixian's team. Yep, indeed. And Zixian, will he lead with the Cyndaquil? Oh no, no that's Kyogre. That's Kyogre's <laughs> Landorus. Yep, it is. BGC 15, a lot of flashbacks today. As we do see Salamence and Talonflame Talon Talon okay. right into the Intimidate from Landorus. Mm -hmm. Well, the Landorus does Intimidate right back. So, in all, all round, everybody gets a minus one attack. Salamence is Intimidating first though, so we know for sure that's not the Scarf Landorus. Mm. I kind of suspect that it has to be maybe a Assault Vester, but Assault Vest doesn't really fare very yeah, well. Not this year. Uh, other option not surviving be Life Orb or Sash Choice Life Orb. I don't see Choice Man being an option because he has nothing on his team to take off here other than Cresselia. Mm. I suppose he's a white guy himself, but that's kind of iffy. So I expect either a Sash or a Life Orb on Landers. Mm. So Farman... Especially uh, since... I suppose Sash might be better preserved on the Parasect, but I suppose we'll find out. Yeah. Well, as, as I was saying, Farman does have option for Tailwind over here to get a speed advantage. 
from the Talon Flame. Summons is already the fastest thing on the field though, but it is intimidated. Mm. So at best, at best he can fire off Hyper Vargas here and it's kind of safe actually, since both of the physical targets have I was going to say that he does have the option of Quick Guard as well, but he Big chooses to switch out the Talon Flame. Yes. Yes. Very safe to here, barring a super all from the Lanheras, which is not going into a Talon Flame. And, and minus one, you would suspect, would not deal as much damage as he would want to. Yeah. Especially since he will suffer the stats drops later on. Yeah, so I think a very free, a very free hyper voice here for Papa. You get free damage on the field. And scout out kind of what Landorus item is. You know, rule out Assault Vest. But you see the fake out, does it go on the Ferrothorn? Yes, yeah, it does. Ferrothorn. Iron Barbs there, walking his magic. And the decision did Mega Evolve, so he's going to be taking two rounds of Iron Barbs recoil. No Rocky Helmet as we see there. Well, we'll see at the end of the turn whether it is leftovers on Ferrothorn. Mm -hmm. Yep, and oh, goes oh, for the double HD. Yeah. Even with one. the recoil, not going to be anywhere near enough. Yeah, the minus one there doing his work. And oh, Lenderus will see the power. power ice. I think it is life form. It's a clean KO on Salamence. Given his slightly naive nature, are we going to see the life form recoil? Yes, we do see life form recoil on Lenderus. So, with Sijan revealing his hand right off the bat. And Farman takes, he takes one down. Uh, sorry, Sushen takes one down, bringing him to a slight advantage. So you kind of wonder though, whether Sushen is running a mixed Landorus with Earth Power, or whether he has physical attacks as well. Oh yeah, and uh, the Ferrothorn did recover from leftovers there as well. Yes. And Telefrain will return to the field. Unintimidated. And actually, it might actually feel somewhat secure right now, because Farman might be able to gamble on Landorus being fully special, and not carrying a rock attack. Well, again, that is a very dangerous gamble to make. Yeah, what, what would they have? Earth power, hidden power ice, what other rock? Yeah, the thing is, even attacks? traditionally, Life of Landorus, even when mixed, tend to carry Stone Edge as his last attack. Mm. So, Tenframe is still not safe. Though, Life of Brave into Landorus without any bulk investment, wow, I don't think Intuition really wants to be seen I mean, that damage. <laughs> I mean, at the very most, maybe the Landorus will take itself out from the Life of Recoil. But uh, that, I'm not sure about the damage calculations on that one. So, Farman, Talon Flame, but the Ferrothorn is at least free to do whatever it wants. Leaves it here, I yeah. would suspect. Oh, well, Talon Flame has to pick his target quite carefully. Whether he wants to, whether he wants to bring Bird into the Landorus and try and fish for the KO. Mm. Or go straight for the Talon Flame, or go straight finish up the Kangas Well, we'll find out soon. Ray Bird does play the animation, going Kangas straight into yep, the Kangas Gun. Kangas Gun, recognizing that he's the biggest threat to his Ferrothorn right now. He's making a gamble that the Landorus is not really able to hit Ferrothorn, though Life from Earth Power is still going to do a decent amount of damage to Ferrothorn. And we do see Earth Power come out. So if Farma was hoping to preserve his Ferrothorn, that might not have been the better choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, but it goes for the Swagger. He's that... really gambling on the Fer Landorus not carrying any physical attacks. I, I don't know, I kind of feel if he had Leaf Seed, that would have, been, would have been better. But if he has Swagger, he probably doesn't have Leaf Seed. That is very risky and that is not something... Well, then again, who am I to judge? Farman has always used unconventional um, sets. Yeah, I think this is the inner way one coming out here. <laughs> okay, so now they are both tied one apiece. The Kyogre. Definitely threatening the Kyogre. Uh, the kind of thing. Honestly, with the amount of damage on Ferrothorn on the field, Ferrothorn cannot take two hits. Even Origin Pulse, if Sushen is worried about Great Bird nerfing Water Spout power, Plus an Earth Power, it's going to be enough to bring down Ferrothorn. So at this point, I think Sushen is just trying to overwhelm Farman with um, offensive pressure here. Yeah, without, and without the Leaf Seed to recover, Ferrothorn is not going to be able to hang on for much longer. I mean, you don't have to count the fact that the Landorus is confused, might not land the attack. So, at best, there's only one attack coming out from Kyogre. That's from Kyogre. And the Ferrothorn should be able to take that quite comfortably. Question is whether the Titanflame wants to stick around. I, I wouldn't call it comfortably. Okay, but it's able to take the attack and survive. Question is whether the Talon Flame wants to stick around, and he does. Goes for he the tailwind. Does not go for Brave Bird to nerf Water Spout's damage. Water Spout could kill Ferrothorn at this point. Huh. Very interesting play. Will we see confusion at his work here? And no, Earth Power does connect with the Ferrothorn. As you see, Earth Power does, does so much damage. And Water Spout would have been more than enough. As we see Origin Powers come out, lands on both. Farman down to his last Pokemon, probably the Xerneas. Hmm. Who, who could bring this back? No, no, actually no. He didn't prefer the Kyogre. If he did, he would put it in KO for Dazzling Gleam. As it is, I don't see a way back for Farman. Mm. He needs two hits to bring down Kyogre. Yeah. And two hits, oh, he actually builds his own Kyogre. Even worse for Farman. Since I believe Tushan is running... Well... I mean, 
at this point, it's just one Pokemon against the Gen 3. Hasn't even revealed the one at the back yet. Yeah, it might even be might even be Parasect, who is immune to water attacks. <laughs> yeah, at this point, the question and is we whether... We know that Landorus is faster, so... Mm. So Shen probably running a max speed Landorus, is going to outspeed Farman's Kyogre as well. Well, at the very least, Farman will be able to tell whether Zixuan has Thunder or not on his Kyogre. I don't think Zixuan needs to review that. Mm. He has no need to review that. He can just overwhelm Farman with resistant attacks. Earth Power, another Water Attack, another Earth Power. Farman's going to go down. There's no reason to use Thunder if you have Thunder. And Landorus... I think it is Parasect. Oh, oh, it's actually Cresselia. So, Kyogre so Shen trying to trick room? Maybe. Ice Beam onto the Lander slot, which is now Crest. Deals just a fair bit of damage. Yeah, definitely Sushen still in the driver's seat here. Um, first game it seems to lose, really. Yeah, barring some really bad misplays and letting Farman get off free water spouts, I don't see a way back for Sushen. So interestingly, Farman didn't, bring cho didn't choose to bring his. Xerneas, which I felt would have done much better. I really question the switch out of Landorus though. Given that you're down to your last Pokemon, just get Landorus, get the free damage and lose Landorus. Mm. It's not like you have any item information to conserve at this point. And Kyogre goes for Warrior Spout here and full HP. Still not able to take yeah, out the Yeah, definitely, uh, Tushen revealing he has Thunder. I don't think that was necessary. Yep. I mean... And Trick Room goes up. So, I mean, does Farman not want to bring the Xerneas just because of Trick Room? I wonder if Farman should be forfeiting at this point though. Since I think the Crystal is about to press a move that Farman would want to know. But, well, he's done what he has done, and we'll be moving on to game two. So, Shen not given the chance to review, I believe, rest on his Crystal here. I honestly feel that Xerneas would have done so much work for Farman. Yeah, Especially nothing, since now... You now know he knows Landorus is special. Yeah, uh, you get a Geomancy up, doesn't matter if under Trick Room, you're, if you're able to smash the attacks and fire back and get KOs, that's one way to win. And Tushan didn't even bring the Parasect, which could stop the Xerneas. A really, really strange misstep, honestly. When, when Tushan only has one Legendary, and you chose to match his Legendary with your own, I really have to question that I mean, play. match your own le match legendaries with him is fine, but not bringing your advantage of another legendary, especially one that could potentially seed. And I even for the Parasite, he has Talon Flame. Yes. So, they, they, he has um, counters for Zixuan's counters as well. Well, now I think Farman should be able to very comfortably, very co confidently say that the Parasite is holding Focus Sash. Yeah, and very strange misstep. I think from how Farman was playing, I think he kind of decided that his win condition was Ferrothorn. Yes. But he couldn't he couldn't punch hits. I think Farman way overestimated his Ferrothorn's bulk. Yeah, or underestimated Landorus. Um, maybe he thought after being intimidated the Landorus earthquake or superpower isn't gonna be enough to touch the Ferrothorn. He didn't expect the Landorus to be special. Fire or single target, life orb, earth powers. But as well. any amount of chip onto Land onto Ferrothorn immediately puts it within range of your opponent's water attack. You know, I think I know why Farman lost. He didn't bring Smeagol. That is, that is the mascot for him. That is his defining Pokemon, and he didn't bring it. Well, Farman has been known to play both variants of Smeagol, and there's no other likely session on his team. So it could go either way as of now. If it is the Scarf though, I suspect he may have been worried about Sir Shen's Landorus being Scarf. Mm. But now that he knows that it isn't, he might be more free in bringing his Smeagol this time. And, and he definitely has to bring... Oh, but the thing is, he might know that Sir Shen's Cresselia is chest though. So? So you, you can't dark void it. Yeah. You get Chiru Map for free. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter, but the as long as you get Xerneas set up, that's enough for him to sweep, especially now yeah. he knows that Xerneas is special. Actually, there's nothing on Sushen's team beyond the Kangaskhan that hit the Xerneas. Who cares if Chiru goes up? You've got plus two special defense. Sushen can't touch you. And not only you have to worry about the Xerneas, but whatever that uh, Farman chooses to throw at you as well. So we'll see if he decides to adjust in that way. So Strength Scan and Cresselia. Hmm. So Tushan going straight for the trigger mode in game one. But they do that on turn one. And, and Lucy for some and reason, Flame again. Farman just not switching up his leads. And arguably in an even worse position this time. Yeah, uh, Trick Room is bound to get set up. The Kangaskhan. The only advantage of pressure. course, I guess, is that he has not been intimidated this time. So he does 
have a chance of killing Kang Kang with a double target. No, uh, I don't think there'll be a target, double target this turn since the Kang Kang will go for a fake out. But do you really want to, does he really want to fake out and do a potential quick guard though? That's the yeah, risk. That, that is run. a wasted turn either way. So I feel that it, it is worth the risk. And at the very least, you only guarantee that one attack is going to come out from Farman's side. That's true. Yeah. It's not like Farman is threatening some game-breaking setup like yeah. a Dark Boy. Or Sergio's GMC. Which he to totally could have, but chose not to bring. Alright, so next goes Mega. No reason for the, both of the Megas on the field right now to activate the Mega Stones. Not to activate. And Farman could be on tilt here, I guess. I mean, he's already lost the first game. If he loses this one, Fake Out does come out onto, onto the Mets. So Tarnflame will get the, I, I really hope he doesn't tail in here. I really hope he doesn't tail in. Let's go for Fake Into Kangaskhan, one suspects. I was kind of hoping he had a taunt to lock down the Cresselia, prevent it from setting up uh, Cres, uh, Trick Room. Goes for a Brave Bird though. Decent amount of damage on With the Kangaskhan. With the life Yep. And Skill Salt coming out from the Cresselia will take away Gale Wings. But without, without Trick Room on the field though, Mens can just pick up the KO on Kangaskhan yeah, instead. And I mean, even without the Gale Wings, I believe the Flame is still pretty fast. Yes, and it's still faster than Kangaskhan. And, and Sucker Punch will not KO, I don't think. Yeah, and Zushin is. Actually, the Crest still is at full HP. I think it's a bit of a challenge for Farman to take out the Crest, even with double targets coming out from both his I don't points. think Farman needs to care about the Crest at all. At this point, Farman just needs to bring down everything next to the Crest. Especially if it's a refusal to Trick Room. If the Crest takes any damage, it's only because the partner already fainted. Mm. And in this case, it's a very clear double action to the Kangaskhan, and there's nothing Tsujian can do about it. Well, sort of revealing a surprise pick up protect set right now <laughs> on the Kangaskhan. Uh, well, Tsujian has been known to use unorthodox Pokemon, as we have seen. These are as orthodox as it gets, though, beyond the legendaries itself. Alright, so yes, he does have pick up protect. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> double H into. Oh, oh my double H into the Cresselia. A good amount of damage. Ah, will the Brave Bird be enough to take out the, pick up the KO here, though? No, no he but goes it goes into the Kangaskhan. Uh, smart, smart split. As now Trium goes up, and Sushan in a much better position, though. Uh, yeah, yeah, actually, he's, he's fine here, actually. Yeah, uh, Tanflin doesn't have the priority gear wings anymore. Cresselia should be able to finish off Salamence with Ice Attack. Mm -hmm. So, he probably should have done that on turn 1, but eh, it works out. Eh, I, I mean, at the very, I mean, his logic is now he's not wasting Trick Room turns going for all this setup. That's true. Yeah. And disabling the Gale Wings gives him a much better time under Trick Room. Mm -hmm. Though, Farman could just switch that frame out, eh? Yes. So, I suppose the, the more obvious switch, switch out Salamence is because you predict Ice Attack coming there, Farman has plenty of options to take a very weak Ice Attack coming from Cresselia. Yeah, bring in maybe the Ferrothorn even to punish maybe a physical attack from Kangaskhan. Yeah, actually a lot of choices for Farman here. Though, they would he have brought Ferrothorn again, I wonder. Mm. Oh, Telephone does switch out, hoping to... I think it is Ferrothorn coming in. Oh, yes, yep, it, is. yes it is. Hoping to catch the, some Iron Buffs recoil onto the Kangaskhan. And Salamence protect. protects. Scouting out what Ice Stack that Cresselia carries. It is the Ice Beam. As Return goes into the Ferrothorn and will do a pitiful amount of damage after the Intimidate, taking more recoil than he's going to do to Ferrothorn itself. Yeah, being not very effective as well. Slowly but surely, I think Farman should try to wear out this Trick Room. Because most of uh, Sushin's Pokemon are pretty slow. And Ferrothorn is the slowest thing outright. You're right. Now, and now the Kangaskhan is threatened by the KO. Although, that shouldn't really be the focus for Farman since I don't think the Kangaskhan is a threat. No, it's more of the Crest Salia of the still bring down the Kangaskhan. Mm. I think he can bring out Salamence here, freely. Even into Talonflame. I think Talonflame can still take two Ice Beams at this point. Because Crest Salia's offense is just so underwhelming. So Ferrothorn is free to just pick off targets. Even Kangaskhan protects. Every protect that Kangaskhan uses is a wasted Trick Room turn. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Farman wants to preserve Salamence for the late game. Once Trick Room runs out. So, no reason to keep Salamence in here. So whether he brings in his Talon Flame or reveal his la the last member on his team, Sushin hasn't swapped at all. Yeah. You know, so he's just wasting Trick Room turns while he, these two stay on the field. Yeah, I mean Kangaskhan is okay under Trick Room, but having the Cresselia stick around under Trick Room 
Uh, and Farmer also has a much easier time playing around with the Shen now because now that he's seen Fake Out and Protect, he knows that Kangasan only has one coverage move. If he has no fighting attack, he can't touch Ferraton. If he has no Sucker Punch, then Ferraton can hit it anyway. But he chooses to bring in Kauga to eat the Ice Beam. Huh. Which means again, Farman didn't bring the Zhenyas. Why isn't he bringing the Zhenyas? <laughs> I, I I really do not know. I mean, if he, he, logically, if he wanted to, he would have led it from the start. Goes to, for the Gyro Ball. Is he finishing off the Kangaskhan? Yep, yes, he does he finish is. off the Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan will go down. He had to reveal its fourth move. So we're not sure whether he has a fighting attack or the Sucker Punch. But at least now Farman does know he carries the Protect and Ice Beam. Gonna do 9 damage to the Kyogre. <laughs> not really a big amount of damage, a game-changing amount, I think, I would think. And Sushin, I'm not sure what he can bring in here, barring Parasect? Mm, yeah, Parasect is, I guess, I mean, it does have dry skin, so Kyogre can't touch it with any water attacks, and Ferraton can't really, um, can't really hit it with Leech Seed either. Doesn't have Leech Seed though, I think it's pretty clear by now. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the Ferraton is just going to go for the Swagger. Yes, he's gonna target the Parasite, definitely. No, 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 don't do that. If you target the Parasite, then C Bomb will only kill his character. <laughs> that's an absolutely <laughs> terrible play. Shame on you, Justin. Oh, well, that's a play but that. That again, that never, that never stopped Farman before. <laughs> well, Sushin definitely considering. Maybe he wants to bring in the Cyndaquil here. In the rain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what else he could bring. Maybe his own Kyogre, but that'll be exposing it to Ferrothorn. Yeah, it's yeah. really a terrible position for him here. Trick Room is just not in his favor at all. <laughs> and he, he definitely tossed into it really. I, I would say, but we don't know his last slot, so we can't say for sure. But either way, he chooses to bring in Kyogre. The problem uh, here is that if Kyogre, if his Kyogre protects from Ferraton, that gives Farman a free water spout. Yes. If he takes the hit, then he takes the hit. And that's our way. E e either way, Farman definitely driving advantage here. I think Zhixian is forced to stall out his own trick room. Or reset it right now. <laughs> he can. Mm. Protect Kyogre and just reset the trick room here and now. <coughs> but he still <coughs> needs to the water spout. And no, he can't. Because Kusali will faint to the water spout because he will go last if he uses trick room. Indeed, indeed. <coughs> that Zhixian is really stuck in a rock, between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, he's definitely cornered here. He needs to bank on our missing, I think. <laughs> oh, I mean, he could. Farman could just go for Swagger. He could, yes. Farman totally could. <laughs> and totally would. But I, it's a bit risky, you know, having seen the Thunder come out from Zhixian's own Kyogre the last game. So. Yeah, yeah he does good to protect. So Zhixian is just being cornered, giving Farman the free water spout. Mm -hmm. You do see Power Wave come out, so Farman revealing his full moveset. And Scout four. onto the Kyogre. Oh my. Yeah. Farman throwing that away. Not really, I think. I think he feared the Thunder a lot. Too much that he forgot about Cresselia being able to set up Trigu. He thought that his Ferrothorn maybe had another extra turn, but he forgot that Cresselia could just change the speed again. But now he has a faster Kyogre. So yes. now he can press Water Spout freely. He should, honestly. He has no reason not to. Uh -huh. Sushin has no way to change the weather. Cresselia will go down, Kyogre will take a good chunk, and leave himself open to the power KO. Mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure Sushen has really improved his position. Yeah, and, and I guess... Oh, helping hand coming out. Thunder should be enough. Is it going no. to matter though? No. But Farmer chooses to score again. I'm not sure why. Maybe he doesn't carry the Thunder on his own. We've seen Water Spout. Mm -hmm. And Thunder goes on the Kyogre not with the helping hand boost. Not going to be. Is that a crit? Yes, yes it, it is. is Farmer does not get him the luck of the draw yeah. there. But Ferratons? Crucially still alive. Can he land the, the power whip? He does land it. Is it going to be enough with the score? It is yes, going to be is. enough. So crucially with the Kyogre down here, uh, he can bring in his Talon Flame, which doesn't have to fear the uh, water attacks coming in. And crucially has reset his own ability to kill wings. I still wonder though, whether Farman kind of threw away a free water spout. Eh. At this point, surely Farman knows that he's faster. Sushen down to his last two. All well, Farman does have Talon Flame, the choice of Talon Flame or Mans. If it is Parasect, it's gonna be very hard for Sushen to generate enough offense. Yeah, I, I mean, it's gonna, gonna stat down on Mans and on Talon Flame, neither of which are <laughs> opponents he wants to face. Uh, I'm not sure entirely sure why Sushen is dwelling on it. He only has one choice. Uh, maybe it's not Sushen that's dwelling, maybe it's Farman. Oh, Farman has not. Farman has already made a move.
So I, I suspect it is not something to Shen wants at this point. <laughs> yeah, well, I do hope to see the Cyndaquil. He couldn't do any worse than Parasang <laughs> at this point. Oh, Cyndaquil. Yeah. Cyndaquil at, at least Cyndaquil can survive a hit from Salamence. <laughs> And yes, Maman chooses to bring in the men's. Oh, it is the Cyndaquil <laughs> coming up for Sushen. And he reveals his air balloon. <laughs> okay, very, very interesting. Uh, I mean, if Cyndaquil does have a fire attack, I, maybe he can 2 kill the Ferrothorn here. I think he can 1 kill. Oh. <laughs> Step is very important. Oh. Yeah, but you know, being able to survive an Double attack edge. from the men's, yes. That is going to be key here, especially since we saw the air balloon, correct? Yes. So it doesn't so have not, the sash. It's not sash or evil light. <laughs> I'm sure evil light might actually give it a chance, but air balloon, well, clearly not meant to be brought. But he brought it anyway. Kudos to him, sticking to his guns. I, mean, I think his guns are about to misfire. <laughs> uh, I, I guess it's for the Groudon matchup. Seen the quill. The Groudon <laughs> matchup, just uh, insists. Uh, uh, well, not really effective against Faman, who was packing the Kyogre. I strongly suspect Sinekyo will ki get killed by a Fire Punch. <laughs> okay, so Zixuan hoping that uh, Faman misplays here. Double edge into the Sinekyo. You cruel. Into oh, the crest. Oh, into the crest. Farm just can't bring himself to kill that um, Sinekyo. Are we going to see a Fire Attack from the Sinekyo? And Sinekyo uses Flamethrower on the Ferrothorn. Survives! It's not enough to take it out. And Ferrothorn goes for the Swagger. <laughs> Match is definitely in Farman's favor here. <laughs> almost, almost. I mean, it could have been a damage roll for all we know. I certainly have not run any calculations for Sinekyo before. Yeah. That word should be a very clean money kill on an itemless in the kill. Oh, but it goes for attack. Ghost, no, doesn't go for the a quick, quick attack. attack. All to the men's. Does a bit of cheap damage as an act of defiance. Oh, Cyndaquil shows the flash fire. <laughs> I'm not sure what these two players are doing now. Whoa, Cinder there's Cinder a lot of damage from Gyro Ball. <laughs> I suppose in this case, it is permissible to Gyro Ball a resistant Pokemon. Unlike someone else we know who likes to gyro ball Palkias. <laughs> yeah, especially being a resistant hit as well. And see the crew does go for it. Last go for another quick attack. And he get a With crit. the plus two. Almost brings down the Cyndaquil. But no, we'll fall to the Draco Meteor. here. And we've been moving on to a game three. It's a Shen. You one suspects being more serious this time. Yes. I mean, what else could he have brought? The, the, the Landorus or the Parasect? The Parasect, definitely. At least gives him spore pressure. But honestly, actually now that you think about it, given the damage output from Cyndaquil, maybe that's one way he could use to bring down Ferrothorn? He doesn't need it. We saw previously. One Earth Power, and he can just two Earth Powers and, and an Origin Powers, and that's it for Ferrothorn. So perhaps maybe switching the Cyndaquil in maybe for a Landorus would have been... It's pretty clear that Farman's Ferrothorn is probably brave, max attack. Very minimal bug investment beyond maybe the HP. Mm -hmm. So special attacks are doing a lot. We saw Earth Power do good chunk. I mean, it was life up after all, yes. and single target. But life up, like you said, Earth Power, Earth Power, Origin Powers, that's a dead Ferrothorn. And well, I hope Faman does see the opportunity for him to bring his own Xerneas to sweep here. Uh, he has not brought it for the past two games, I do not know why. We do not know why the Xerneas is yes. not coming out. Has to come out, surely. Has to. It's, it's I mean, uh, now you know most of your opponents are using special attacks. Even under Trick Room, even if you lose the speed, doesn't matter as long as you can take the hits and fire back. I suppose you've seen Cresselia set as Trick Room, Skill Swap, Helping Hand, Helping Hand Ice Beam. Yes. Ice beam no Psychic Step. Uh, no reason to run it in this meta, as I recall you telling me. Yes. And still Ice Beam though, so no Icy Wind, Dual, Speed Control. I mean, he already has Trick Room, so running Icy Wind is a bit counterproductive. A bit of a waste, I think. Well, we haven't seen the power set come out from Zixian as well. So still no Xerneas and still no Smeargle from Faman. Yes. Come on, Faman, you have to bring it for this last round. Bring both, Faman. Bring yes. both. Nothing S stopping it. Yeah, Smeargle. Oh, I suppose Kangaskhan, eh? Eh. <laughs> eh. 
mean, but then even if you, if you do bring that, then you force him to choose between which does he want to figure out. Does he want to stop the Geomancy? No, uh, actually it becomes a bit dangerous because then Farman kind of has, has an opportunity to helping hand double edge the Xerneas. Ah. Or Tsushin has an opportunity to helping hand double edge. Or oh, actually, he, he doesn't have double edge. It's return. Mm. So again, he doesn't even have double edge to damage the Xerneas. He only has then, return. Even then, I, as you mentioned, Smeller could be scarf, which means it could fire out the Dark Void before Kangaskhan can even land the hit. And we will see Kangaskhan land the rest for Tsushin. So I think no single kill this time. Why not? And, and again, see? we see Tenfling Salamence come off. Uh, does Farman not have faith in his Xerneas? Oh, he's Smeagol. Farman has never not had faith in his Xerneas. A uh, Smeagol, rather. Is, is this the real Farman? Well, the shirt looks like a Farman shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Okay, intimidates all round. Everybody at minus one here. Um, I would say it would be an even trade, but now we know the Landorus being special. Yeah. Farman's not going to leave his mantle open. Not when he's intimidated. He's going to preserve those mans and preserve Intimidate as well by stitching it out now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that, that leaves the question of what the Titan Flame is going to do. Uh, oh, then again, it might be it. Then again, the Fake Out could be going on the Manso. A Tailwind, uh, chip damage on the Landorus with Brave Bird. I don't think he really wants to Tailwind. It doesn't give him that much of an advantage. Mm. So just straight up damage to press advantage. Yeah, I suppose. Unless he wants to pick out the Fake Out, but again, no point. You don't want to keep Salamence in. Yes. But again, how much good would Azanias do here? <sighs> a Smeagol rather, yeah. Either or both? Both together would be uh, ideal. Especially since Zhen is not really running very conventional setups to, to break the Smeagol or the Zhenyas setup. Well, Kangaskhan is, I suppose, on his own alone to break either Smeagol or Zhenyas, but again, Return. Return does not do enough damage to Zhenyas. And he's still not bringing Zhenyas. <sighs> Well, definitely uh, both players taking time. Taking time to select their moves. As well. I mean, Farman does have to worry because he did lead this the first round and no got severely switch. punished. Salamence is leaving some open HP eyes again. Should, should, should be the protect coming out. I think he's doubling into the Landorus. I, I don't know, that feels oh, a bit... Again, he leaves open to the fake out, that's true. Yes. So uh, the man has to protect here from Farman. Doesn't want to be but caught giving protecting up, the giving up the Intimidate. A bit of a waste. I think the chance was there to switch out the Salamence, preserve the Intimidate. And Brave Bird does go. Landorus, I suspect. Yep, into the Landorus. Again, 50%. Even with Landorus, the Intimidate. Yeah, yeah. Landorus clearly not carrying any bug whatsoever. And we do see Ethan Power. Uh, yep, Farman is not going to fall for that again. Right, he and does go for the return. Go we'll take out this Heaven Flame. Mm -hmm. Question is now, the man is in the position to kill the Landorus though. Yes. Yes, it is. So if Farman does have Xerneas, now is the time to bring it out so you can set up. Come on, Farman. No, no. it's Ferrothorn. <laughs> well, that's still not too bad. From playing, from playing with the with the upper, upper hand with faster Pokemon, Farman just brings in his slowest Pokemon. <laughs> and just kind of throws all his momentum away. Yeah, I mean, the reason I think why Ferrothorn worked for him previously was because of Cresselia's and Air Trick Room, which forced Zushen to back out halfway and uh, remove Trick Room on his own. Uh, I guess if he does bring out the Landorus, he does still have a decent chance of winning. So Mans now here should be able to pick up an easy KO on Landorus. Uh, Landorus is going to protect or switch out though. He's no reason to stay in and get KO. Mm. It's, it's so obviously a uh, double edge way to that slot. The problem with Zushan that he, he has nothing to take double edge. And Zushan, I mean since he has returned on his Kansan, isn't going to pack much power, especially after the team did as well. So the Mans should be comfortable staying in to try and kill the Landorus. Yeah, Landorus does protect. Does Farman walk into the obvious protect? Double edge. Yes, into the Landorus protect. I, I think he wasn't, he was calling oh, a switch. Oh, Kangasan reveals Giga Impact. Minus one though. Not gonna be anywhere near enough. I'm not sure what Tushan was hoping for. <laughs> a crit maybe, a crit. Uh, I don't think a crit would have been enough either. And Gyro Ball lands onto the Kangaskhan. But Kangaskhan will not be able to move for the next turn. And Tushan and has put himself into an absolutely terrible position. The Nero is already protected, can't do anything other than take attack. And Kangaskhan literally can't do anything. Yes. And it's at the mercy of being killed by a Gyro Ball, I believe. It was 50% from their previous attack. Um, yeah, I mean, Farman could just easily pick up two KOs. Yes. And I believe even with double edge recall into Landorus, he's not going to be KOing himself. Hmm. So Salamence will hang on, 
still be the fastest thing on the field, but still intimidated and Farman could stop it out. The reset is a And Landorus does switch out. Who does Farman, who does Tijan have to take the double edge? It's going to be the power side, which going to be going like down it. right down to his sash. But hold on. Oh, but the Barsley recoil has a lot of HP. So the recoil might be enough to take out the men's as well. Oh, but oh, no, no sash. sash. Are we going to see effect spot throw? Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Dry skin. It's dry skin. Yeah, but, but the recoil does <laughs> take itself out. So Tijan making the trade. A not terrible trade, but... Saving Slenderous for what exactly you wonder? Yeah. I kinda wonder. Yeah, the one thing about it, the one thing that Landorus pinned down was the Salamence with HPIs. So now that Salamence is down, what is Landorus doing anyway? I guess it is uh, out to the Ferrothorn. Now yes, Landorus and Kyogre are coming for Tishen. And I suppose it could be a damage show for the Earth Power and Origin Powers onto the Ferrothorn. Yes. I mean we did see the and especially, I mean, with the deep date, I don't think Ferrothorn will be able to take out Kyogre as well. And here comes the rain. Now imagine if Parasect was here. <laughs> what a fun time Parasect would have. Yeah, it's just surprising to me actually the Parasect not even having the Sash. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you can buck out the Parasect, but you still want the Sash because I don't care how much buff you have, you're not taking a flying attack. And there are many flying attacks running and flying yeah, around. Uh, flying, around. Oh, yeah. so fly, uh, flying attacks flying around, I see what you did there. By the way, both of the legendaries here going primal. But Farman uh, has a speed advantage. Yeah, his Kyogre well, is faster. Landorus is the fastest thing on the field. I suspect that's a timid Landorus, so it will outspeed Farman's Kyogre, no matter how much speed Farman has. Well, to but, but it can't do anything. It's a special Landorus. It can't pick up a KO. Maybe I mean, even if it was physical, he can't KO anything. What, what if uh, they double onto Farman's unless he has Kyogre? To, unless he has Life Orb Explosion. Do you have Life Orb Explosion, <laughs> Tushian? <laughs> that would be very, very surprising. But I mean, he could double Does your Landorus like to wear Leopard Twins? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, Tushian has shown that his Kyogre does have Thunder, so he has a way to deal with Farman's own Kyogre. The question is Ferrothorn. Yeah, I suppose he wants the chief damage on Ferrothorn here. Yes. I believe it will be a damage roll for Origin Pulse and Earth Power since Farman's Ferriton does not run much special run. defense. Yeah. So Shen might be on danger of losing on timer actually. What, is, what are the timer rules? 20 minutes? 3 strikes, fast hey. 45 seconds and you're out. And I believe Sushen has hit his 3 strikes. Though wow. I suppose there was no coming out of this position anyway. You could argue maybe Origin Pulse miss. Farman doesn't run Origin Pulse. Farman runs Water Spout. Okay, then yes, that's true. So Farman in that position, Farman had a very easy Ice Beam into the Kyogre slot. Mm. Uh, well, Farman takes the second, uh, the last game actually, to come out 2-1 ahead of Uh Who, to his props, did quite well, I think. Especially since Farman, I, I really feel, didn't lead optimally. Yeah, Farman didn't play optimally. Didn't bring his optimal Pokemon in that matchup. And Tushen even could even afford to throw Game 2 away <laughs> by bringing Cyndaquil. Uh, you, you could argue that it was not a troll, but Cyndaquil was his only, or one of his only outs to deal with uh, Farman's Ferrothorn. That's what I would say in uh, Tushen's defense for bringing Cyndaquil. Well, I suppose things did work out in the end for Farman, despite, as we said, suboptimally not bringing the Xerneas. Mm -hmm. And we did see uh, Landorus, special Landorus, actually doing a lot of work for Tushen, especially Otto. And we still, yeah, we still haven't seen that last slot. I suppose Landorus doesn't really have any good special attacks beyond Earth Power and HPIs. You're stuck with things like Psychic, Focus, Blast. Maybe that was how he was planning to kill Ferrothorn. No, uh, but then you have used it previously. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we also didn't really see the utility of the Parasect, aside from the large HP being able to take Salamence down from the recoil. That's not large HP. I believe Parasect's HP stats either 60 or 80. Well, still enough. And no Sash either. Very surprising. Very unconventional, but I mean, I suppose him, it's true. You would buck up your parasite, you would EV it defensively. But what item could possibly be better than Sash? Uh, it wasn't Cobra either. Yes, Lumberry maybe? No. But you're immune uh, to spore. Uh, for the Dark Void match, that's true. Then you can spore the Smeagol. Oh, well, I suppose only Tsuja can answer those questions. But then Farman triumphing. Very strangely, we have to ask if that's the real Farman today. He didn't bring Smeagol at all. He didn't bring Smeagol, didn't, didn't go for Didn't get go for easy Zernia setups. Yeah, very Arish. uncharacteristic of uh, Farman. We'll be moving straight on to a second set. So it's, oh, we'll be interviewing Farman. <laughs> and we'll be back shortly.
and we are back with the winner of the third round, Faman. A decisive 2 1 victory over uh, Zishen over there. Um, first of all, congratulations on your win. But I have to ask, there was such an easy victory for you if you had just brought in the Xerneas to set up the Geomancy, especially since you saw the Landors being special and the Kanskan having returned. Okay, maybe if you exclude the Giga Impact at the end, but it was. It was so easy for you to bring Xerneas in to get such a very strong advantage for you. And yet, for all three games, you chose not to bring Xerneas. So, I'm, I'm what's, what, what's, what's your logic behind that? I didn't want to use Xerneas <laughs> because he had Trick Room out. He can use Trick Room and he has a Parasect to use for, And that, that can help him buy free turns and hits at a disadvantage against Trick Room. Okay, well, the Parasect... Well, I was discussing with Matthew just now. And especially since seeing the Landers being special, it didn't really matter if you were slower because if you could sponge the hits and return fire back, um, it would it would still be in your favor. As for the parasite, well, you had the talent flame as well to counter, so you pretty much had all the setup, but you chose not to bring it and instead bring in uh, mens and talent flame, which didn't really work out in the first game either. Yeah, I, I'm not sure what yeah. items he used at the start because when it comes to things like parasite, right? It's it's either I think it's either Lumberry or Focus Sash uh -huh. because it can run Rage Powder and it has Dry Skin to counter Kyogre. Yes. And then for things like I was scared that there's a Lumberry somewhere in this team, and that I was scared that there's a I was scared that I can't tank anything if I don't bring Salamence in. Hmm. So I feel that I needed Salamence to uh, help me tank hits other than the Head of Power Ice. Okay. Well, another question I have is uh, for your Ferrothorn. Your Ferrothorn took a lot of damage from the Landorus. Is it not um, specially bulky or is it, as Matthew put it, 252 HP, 252 attack? No, it's specially bulky. It's specially bulky, yet it took so much damage from a Landorus of power. Okay, that's... Wait, wait. Oh, wait how, much, how much special defense at least? I think at least around 100. Sassy Nature. Sass oh, even Sassy Nature. That's actually quite surprising the amount. Because the power damage you did to Kyogre was at least half. So we were under the pressure that you invested more attack on your Ferrothorn. Hmm. Well, so all in all, you feared the Trick Room mode and the Parasect uh, a lot more than, than you would run to risk bringing the Xerneas. But then what about the Smeargle? Wouldn't, wouldn't that have been a better lead? I feel like Scarf's Mango isn't that good. I think Scarf's Mango has a lack of offensive pressure, presence. I think it would put me at a disadvantage if my opponent were to wake up from Dark Boy. Okay, and well, nevertheless, you still did come ahead. Um, a decisive comeback, 2-1 uh, victory over Sushen. And we'll be moving on to the next match uh, between uh, for another round 3.